How efficient is a wind turbine? What does it even mean to say something is efficient? Where are all the places useful power is lost in a turbine system? These are important questions to consider as we move to a post-carbon society. As Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla Motors and SpaceX, points out, we have this huge fusion reactor in the sky. The sun is an incredible and clean source of energy. We can harvest the light energy from it directly using solar panels or indirectly by making use of the things that move on Earth as a result of heating from the sun's power. One example of this is wind energy. The ocean and air above it on the side of the planet facing the sun most directly gets warm and high pressure air generates wind as a result. This wind will drive our turbine. The sun's light also evaporates water and the wind pushes the water soaked clouds inland where they rain and supply our hydroelectric reservoirs. The sun is ultimately responsible for the energy released in the burning of coal and oil as well. The fossilized hydrocarbons were first put together by organic creatures that live on sunlight. But let's get back to the wind. Let's say there is some kinetic energy stored in the wind as it flows. We want to make use of this kinetic energy. This means we will slow the wind as it passes through the turbine. Of course, if we were to slow the wind to a stop on the backside, the wind then wouldn't pass through the turbine at all. So this means we fundamentally can't harvest all of the kinetic energy from the wind. Some of it has to remain in the flow of the wind for the whole apparatus to keep working. This puts a maximum efficiency of around 30% on any wind to electricity system. As you can imagine, the amount of power available in the wind depends on wind speed. And as you can probably also imagine, the bigger the turbine, the more wind you intercept. And so the power depends on the cross-sectional area of your turbine. Both of these dependencies can be seen in the graph at left. Notice that the vertical axis of this graph is a plot of power measured in megawatts. Power is the rate of energy transfer. One watt would equal one joule per second of energy transfer. So the amount of power available in the wind is huge. It's measured in millions of joules per second. The graph at right tells us that not all of the wind power is converted into electric power. As we mentioned before, only 30% is still available when you consider the basic flow question. You can't have the wind just stop at the backside of the turbine. But what about the remainder of the power? Well, there are lots of places energy can be dissipated into more chaotic or entropic forms. For instance, if the axle on which the turbine is spinning isn't well lubricated, then you'll lose energy through frictional rubbing. The conversion of motion into electricity is accomplished by the rotation of a coil of wire in the presence of a permanent magnet. And that wire will have some small electrical resistance, and this will lead to energy dissipation as well. The efficiency then is defined as a ratio of the actual electrical power output, how much usable power you get, to the wind power input. This ratio is dimensionless, has no units, and it can't be greater than one. So we often refer to it as a percentage, like 10% or 20%. I hope this video has been useful for you.